Hello everybody, John here with Shooting Tips and Tricks and today I'm going to be doing a quick video on some load development I'm doing for the 45 Raptor. This is AR-10 I built from a previous video. And it was kind of a last minute video but I figured for those of you that are getting into reloading might find a little video on load development to be helpful and probably give you a demonstration of what to look for when you're approaching your critical velocity and pressures with your gun. Alright, here we are back in the shop and we're going to take a look at the brass we fired. Alright, now when you're looking for a situation of um, overpressure when you're shooting, uh, your main indication is going to be felt recoil and velocities that you're getting. If you're using a chronograph rather, which anyone that's doing load development, I highly recommend using a chronograph. Because velocity is going to be a big help with what's going on. If you're running a semi-auto, pay attention to your brass ejection too. Because the hotter your load gets, the more violent ejection you're going to have. So, the brass, instead of popping out of your gun and landing about 3 to 5 feet away, might be ejecting out 8 feet away and landing just all over the place rather than a little 1 or 2 foot area. Alright, now in this situation, normally what I would have done is stop shooting at the third one here. And these three I would have not even fired. I would have taken them back and put them in the hammer and knocked the bullet out of them and, and reload them with a lighter charge. Now, when you're looking at your brass, the indication you can look at the primers on them to get your good indication. They say it's not really reliable, but um, I always get pretty helpful bits from looking at the brass. Now if you look at this guy, you can see the primer It's pretty much flat, but a little bit rounded on the edges and a nice round primer punch. Then when you move up some to like this guy, you can see the primer is almost entirely flattened and there's not much rounded on the edge. And if you go up to this guy, you can see it's completely flattened. Now that's your first sign. This guy right here is what you want to look for. Where you have a little arch on the edge, there's a nice rounded primer hole, and you still have a flat spot. Because if your primer is completely arched still, then you might be a little low on your pressures. And then as it increases, the primer will start to flatten. And when it continues to increase, the primer will flatten even more. But what will also happen is, when you look at it really close here, right on the edge of it by the primer hole, there's a little lip here. Now that little lip 
is a cratering. And that's what happens when you start to approach your um, critical pressure mark. And then when you get up to these guys, your primer is completely flat and the cratering is still there, but it's actually smaller. Now the cause of that is that you're running so high of pressures that it's actually forming the crater and then smashing it back down because the pressures are so high. And then when you get up to here, if you ever lose a primer, that's way too high. And this one with the shape of it, I'm amazed I didn't get a primer blowout. And that's basically where the gases are actually forced back into the primer and it blows a hole right where the firing pin struck. Another one you'll get is a um, is back gassing through the edge of the primer around the just around the rim here you'll get gases coming through there that's another sign of overpressure. Now this gun if it was a uh, if it was say a 450 Bushmaster, or 458 SOCOM, or a 500 Beowulf, I wouldn't even have attempted shooting these three. Because the AR-15 platform is only good for about 32, 36,000 PSI, as opposed to the AR-10 platform, which can push up to around 62 to 65,000 PSI. So, for the sake of the video, I just took a couple extra precautions and then just fired these three. Because the chances of a catastrophic failure are pretty slim with modern guns. And this guy, another sign is, you got a nice bubble in the back here. And that's actually because, well this bubble, since it's raised on the back here and smaller in the front, what I surmise is probably the cause of that is that as the bolt was stripping the round out, it was still under high pressure. So it came out to right there when the brass was still expanding. Because you probably can't see it on here, but from here up to about here, there's actually a slight bit of a taper. It's not just flat from here forward, it's actually tapered up to about there. So what I suspect happened was that the barrel was still under significant pressure as the round was being stripped out. Now if I had gotten a catastrophic failure with this one, with an automatic, it would have blown gases back out of the ejection port. And worst case scenario, it would have blown this brass in half. Which I've actually seen with quite a few guns. I've even seen it with AR-15s. Customer will bring one in and say that it won't load around. It'll stick like halfway in. So I'll take a look at it, open it up, put a bore scope down it, and lo and behold there's half a brass stuck in the chamber. And it's usually from hand loading. All right, I think that covers just about everything. Oh, another quick one too is when you look at this guy. Here, see if I can get up here to the camera. There's a little arch right there, and on the other side you can't really see it, but there's a little line going across here. Those are actually marked from the bolt face. This line across here is from where the extractor is. And it's not from the actual extractor, it's because the bolt face isn't nice and round face. It's got a cut on the side to make room for the extractor. And then this arch here, right here, is the ejector pin. So if you look at the bolt face, it has that spring-loaded pin on one side that's sunk in. And that's an indent from it. See on this guy it's completely flat. All it is is a mark on there. There's no lip at all right there. Now when you get up past this point, you can still see the mark, 
Yeah. This guy down here is a little bit more prominent and as well as up here. But now it's an actual lip. You can actually feel it there. That's because you hit so much pressure that it's actually deforming the back of the brass to match the bolt face. And then this guy here, I mean, this is way high. I mean, you can see a plain visible raise, and even the numbers here flattened out. And this here is probably about a 20 thousandths high ramp now. Yep. So this guy is a good indication of your gross overpressure. And even these guys are too high. Anyone getting into reloading, I would say once you start to get the little cratering around the primer, back off your load a little. You want to stick to them right around here where you're getting the flat primer with the little arch on the side. Alright, I think that's about it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.